Okay, so hey guys, my name is Quinston and in this video, I just wanted to talk about the script that I wrote to download all the media from a WordPress website. Now, um, now why am I doing this? Because so I wanted to write a script I was working on a website and I wanted to write a script to download all the all the images from a website. So I thought, hey, um, from a WordPress website. So I thought, hey, why not just write a script to do that in Python? which is my favorite language, by the way. So first of all, before we get into this, I just want to talk about two things. This script purely exists for educational reasons. Do not try this on an existing website. This tutorial includes web scraping using beautiful soap. So web scraping, you need to know the terms and conditions of the website before you do any of that. And uh, so me, I am not liable for any misuse of this script. It's all on you if you you know, use the script to do any nefarious tasks. I will not be responsible for your, uh, you know, usage of the script on any website. So, so the first thing is, uh, let's talk about what we're going to use. So these are the requirements that uh, we need for this tutorial or for the script to run. You have the request module, which helps you send get and post requests. You have beautiful soap, which helps you parse HTML and get and treat HTML like, you know, you can parse it, get values from the HTML. Like if you want values of the body tag, HTML text of the body tag or HTML text of a class or ID, whatever. I mean, this is basically your jQuery in Python. Uh, maybe not jQuery, but you know what I mean. It's basically used to parse HTML. And then you have your import OS. I like to keep it a little bit simpler. We'll just keep everything that is, yeah, I like it like this. Makes a lot of sense. Import OS time. We will use the time uh, library to sleep, to make the you know the pr the, the the process sleep for a while because you don't want to send multiple requests in like completely destroying the server. You want to send them slowly one after the other. So I'm gonna make the program sleep between requests. Yeah, because you know it's a good thing to do. I mean, you you don't want to destroy the server you're you're pulling data from. It's, it's a good thing uh, or, or else you'll destroy your, your, your buffer or whatever. I don't know what happens after that. So yeah, the first thing is we define this. Uh, so how, how does this work basically? So the idea is that you have a WordPress website, which, you know, has WP content uploads. So you basically get something like this where you can go in and, you know, it gives you like images and stuff, right? So it just gives you images and then, you can go in and get the images. So what we're going to do is we are going to get this uh, over here, get this particular URL, put it in our request, um, you know, request and basically get the HTML for that. And then we're going to detect where these links are and then click on them and traverse those links using beautiful soap and then again call requests on them. It's like a recursive function. And at the end of the tunnel, you have these images which you come up to. So like this, for example, these are the images that you come come up to. Um, so yeah, that's basically what we are going to do. So let's just get into the script and see how it works. Um, obviously, this uh, you know, uh, the link to this uh, script is in the description, and you can use it to do whatever. I don't think this works on the cloud WordPress site. I tested on it; it doesn't work simply because it doesn't give you give you access to this particular. Uh, you know, this particular static folder, which lists all the files in it. But I mean, uh, any other WordPress site, I'm sure it will work. I haven't tested it on videos or any other type of content, but I'm sure it will work because I haven't done anything image specific, but I've tested it only on images, but I'm sure it'll work on videos and PDF files and any other kind of file you have in your WordPress media library. Um, cool. So let's get into the, uh, so if you want to use this script directly without messing with anything over here, you can just change your website URL. Even if it's localhost, you can put it localhost over here, HTTP, you know, localhost or something like that, localhost 8000 and it, it would just work. So yeah. So this is the time between requests. I don't know why it's like this time between requests underscore. I'm getting a phone call. Wait a second. And this is the this is basically the time between download requests. So the time between download requests is, uh, you know, as I said, 
you don't want to destroy the server of the website that you are pulling data from so we are going to wait for one second between every request it's just good practice when you're scraping a website and then you have your output directory where you will basically output all the uploaded doc documents or content that you're gonna you know play with so so to run this once and for all is to show you that it actually works i can just do uh i don't know website you can just go to whatever website doesn't matter anyway the point is this works <laughs> so um also there is this ignore sizes re regex uh for particularly the reason behind this is that when you go to an image wordpress automatically resizes uh, the images right so but you don't want these resized images you want the original image so what we do in that case is ignore all the files that contain this pattern in it so this dot pattern that you see over here uh, one more time this dot pattern that you see over here this is the pattern that is detected by the regex see a uh, dash so this is the first dash then you have the number of digits plus so you have more than one digits one or more than one digits then you have the x which is your x over here and then you have digits plus which is more than one and then you have your dot and then you have your uh, extension so if this pattern is detected it means that uh, you don't want to ignore you don't want to you know use you know download this particular file because it is not representative of the original file that you uploaded that's pretty much it so let's just go through this uh, script one by one so uh, you might be wondering where the script runs from where the f where the controller function is called and that is over here you basically call this function called traverse url recursive in this you pass in the um, uh, location the url of the wp content slash uploads url with the website url and we use a url um, we use url lib parse dot url join we can also use something like os dot path dot name uh, path dot uh, where is it join but the problem with os dot path dot join is that it doesn't work very well with uh, urls that go out to the internet it works very well with uh, the urls that you are generating for local manipulation of files like on your file system but if you want to like join urls together it makes a lot of sense to use url lib parse url join also on a side note i'm using python 3 if you are 3.7 if you were wondering uh, about that so let's just go through. so this is obviously a recursive function it has recursive in its name so if i just go to this function it takes a couple of and it also takes an argument of time between download requests uh, so that you have that uh, control so that you can basically control from the function call how much time to wait between requests so you click on this and this is the function over here def traverse url recursive and then you have a url sleep time so the first thing is if you find you know if you this is our regex uh if you find a regex that uh you know supports or uh, is not equal to null when the U uh, when the url is searched for this pattern then you say return because this is um, because what happens is when this is found, I don't want it to go any further. I know that this is not a file that I would want. And uh, yeah, that is the reason I would return. Now, the thing is, you can uh, if you have files that, that are originally uploaded that actually are supposed to have this particular pattern, then what you might have to do is change this a little bit over here. But for the most part, uh, if you have not done any image manipulation or you know added that particular extension then it doesn't really matter you can just run the script as it is but take care that you don't have original images with that extension uh, that's the only caveat to this script at this moment i guess next is what you do is you try to so we can use requests to basically send requests to the internet and so i'm using request.head url so what i'm doing over here is the url was passed uh, the url is basically of uh, wp content slash uploads and what's happening is uploads is basically being sent uh, this, this this is the uploads url so it's basically retrieving the head of that url and 
it's trying to get it and if it doesn't get it it basically says print return the url could not be reached obviously because if it's not reached then what's the point just return everything and stop execution of this function now if r does contain something and r uh, the the value of r does contain something then you basically check for uh, uh, r.headers content type now if content type contains html it means it is an html file and not you know any other file um not an image file obviously not a pdf obviously so if it's an html file it means it, it can be parsed so what do you do is you say str um and then you say content type would contain html and if it's true it means it's, it's an html file and then you do the actual get url the reason we are you doing the headers is because i don't want to get the entire image initially i want to get the head first so that you know the header is not very big the header is very small so the request can be completed very quickly so and depending on the content type of the header itself we can know that if it's an image an html file a text file whatever we can basically recognize what kind of file it is before we run the actual get command so once i know that it's you know an html file i can run the get command uh, you will realize why we don't get images initially once you you know figure that out because obviously if you run the get command on an image you don't need you're basically downloading bandwidth that you don't need to download right so if it if this was the image you can directly know without even getting it or header getting the header you know exactly what kind of image you need obviously if this was somewhere else it would work here we just ignore it anyway the point is once you get the url now r.html contains the html and then you basically parse that text parse that text so using beautiful soap which is a parsing library as we said uh, using the html parser you put in r.text because that's what we got from the get request and this is html so you parse that html using beautiful soap and put all of that parsing information into this html underscore parsed beautiful soul soap object so now what you need to do is you need to so that, that that's what you got right now right and this is the html that you got so if you do a right click uh, inspect element you will find that there's an a tag right so what i'm doing over here now is basically getting all the links and i'm finding all of the a tags so i'm going through all of the a tags and figuring out if the text inside the a tags is name last modified size description parent direct the reason i'm doing this is because these are also a tags but i don't want them to affect in any way shape or form that i want only these i don't want this to be the links i traverse because if i traverse the parent directory i'll go in a backwards loop if i traverse name i'll just i don't know it's just weird that i would do this and i don't want to do that because it will be a recursive uh, it will be an infinite loop if i do that so basically we're going to ignore all of these that's what i'm doing over here if uh, links or get text is equal not equal to name not equal to last modified not equal to this not equal to this not equal to this then you sleep for time t and then you traverse the url lib.join urls link.href so here we're getting the href attribute and combining with with our existing url so for existing url was website url content uh, uploads then the new url will be output directory oh, wait, where is it sorry yeah url parse url join url and then links href that's pretty much what it will be so in this case it will be 08 i think yeah or whatever I'll just refresh this i don't want this part over here I'm just underneath this so yeah this is a 2018 2018 is what it will be because uh, if you click on this right click and inspect element you'll see that it's a uh, href attribute contains 2018 which is available to you as an array uh, sorry dictionary reference in the links that you are uh, going through one by one pretty epic right yeah so then you basically recursively call this again and then you as you understand it just go recursively now what happens if the content is does not contain html okay content type does not contain html it means that it's an image or something else it's a it's clearly not an html file that you can traverse and parse so in that case you basically uh, try to save that image that's what all you do you basically try to save that image in the location 
that was um, there. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my output directory and uh, I'm going to split my actual URL from W content. So if I split my actual URL from W content, what's going to happen is I'm going to get the uploads and then whatever that follows, you know, whatever it follows is what I'm going to get. So basically if I split it from here, this is what I get. So I want my output directory to contain all the files in the same order that they were in the actual particular system um, in the website. So in the same uh, you know month and uh, type and folder. So that's what I'm doing. So file path os dot path dot join. You join the output directory with your URL split, and that is the the first one. That is the second part of the sp uh, array split. And then if not os dot path exists. So if this OS part dir name is basically a function that extracts uh, the directory name from your file path. So if you have something like, uh, I don't know, this, if it has .jpg at the end, then it basically will give you the directory path instead of this over here. So that's one thing. Um, then you have OS make dirs, which gives you this and then a directory. So basically, if uh, this path does not exist, then you try to make the folder. And if you can't, you just print that it cannot be created next um, so once this happens you basically try a bunch of stuff you try and then you try again order requests uh, you basically get the image file that you want and then you open the file and then you write the content to that file and then you basically print out that file downloaded file path simple so basically open the file up that you want so file path will give you that file path and uh, WB is your right uh, write reference preference and um, dot write simple function and then r.content. content basically write all the content that you got with your request inside that file and then you're done you basically say file downloaded file path except if this causes an error basically this causes an error there was an error opening the file and that's basically it that's literally how this particular thing works it does include parsing of the html and website and beautiful soap and all these things it was a fun thing to do you can find the code on my github and uh yeah thanks for watching guys don't forget to like and share and subscribe to the channel if you like this content and um i will see you in the next one peace